Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Tonight we continue with the Abbeville 1940 campaign. June 5th, Table 3, Flanking Achu Fran Lau. <laughs> So welcome back everyone. It's been a couple weeks since we uh, did this campaign. We did a bolt action game and we did a uh, sharp practice game for American Independence Day. But we are now back. So, and uh, again, of course, uh, pardon me for my butchering of the French pronunciation in this uh, campaign. That's something I'll, that will probably never get better. So just before we begin tonight's briefing, a quick recap. Um, so the last battle we did was table two going with a bang at Friers and the Germans once again um, swept the British aside, captured the supply depots and they're marching on uh, to the objective. So the British platoon led by Lieutenant Malcolm MacDonald is uh, they're down two men. One was captured by the Germans, one was killed and we have one rookie junior leader. Our CO's opinion is at minus three, our men's opinion is still holding strong at zero because we've been taking light casualties even though we've been losing. The Germans are still rolling with 1st Platoon, Lieutenant Heinz Kramer. Uh, he's down two men wounded. His uh, men's opinion is at plus two and his CO's opinion is at plus two. So 1st Platoon has rolled straight through the first two tables without losing a man. I'm sorry, they got one man killed and one man wounded. So they're down two men. The Highlanders are going to be uh, at minus one on their force support due to the low opinion of the commanding officer at minus three. And that is it for the recap. Now we'll go into the briefing for this mission. Tonight's mission will be using the flank attack scenario from the main rule book. So the British sector is going to be in this table quarter up here. And I will be placing uh, three patrol markers anywhere into my um, deployment area, which is this quarter of the table. The Germans, on the other hand, will be placing two separate groups of three patrol markers along the other edges, so along this edge and along that edge. And both of those groups will move independently of each other. Once the patrol phase is complete, the attackers will be placing four jump off points. The defenders will be getting three jump off points plus one extra jump off point anywhere within their um, deployment zone. Support wise, the attackers are going to have 10 support points. The defenders will have 5. I normally would get 6 due to the force rating difference, but thanks to my CO's opinion at minus 3, I'll be stuck at 5. And each time this game is refought, we'll add 2 support points to the attacker's support level, which that hasn't been a problem for Andre yet. He hasn't had to refight a battle, but hopefully uh, tonight I can change that. Terrain wise, uh, I apologize for the uh, board. This board was very heavy on wheat fields, and I did the best I could. So this whole area is supposed to be wheat fields, pretty much. Uh, there's also supposed to be some scrub land, which is going to be similar to the wheat fields, as in you are in uh, light cover if you're stationary. But the scrub is running along this road and in this area along the roads here. So that'll be uh, hard to remember, but we'll try. And then this area here is actually supposed to be wheat as well, but I run out of wheat fields, so I just put a light orchard. It'll be the same effect, stationary if, uh, or light cover if stationary, and the trees are not gonna affect line of sight all, at all. Uh, these trees are gonna be light cover, and the hedge is going to be um, scraggly and thin, light cover, but does not block line of sight. Uh, the buildings, hard cover. And the high walls, of course, are hardcover and block line of sight. So that is it for the briefing. Um, not much else to say about this one. Uh, it's an, it's going to be a very important for the British to win this one. At least, or at least hopefully put a hurting onto Andre without losing too many uh, men themselves. So I'll go ahead and look at the forces. Here we have Lieutenant Malcolm McDonald's platoon. So we have Malcolm McDonald himself with pistol, got his trusty Piper Biff Robertson with him. He's assisted by another uh, senior leader, Platoon Sergeant Rig Big Bobby McDuff. And we have three sections, 
Each section is commanded by a corporal with rifle. The blue disc is going to be the uh, rookie junior leader, so he's only going to have one command initiative. And I believe he might even have a reduced command range. I'll have to check that before we start. Uh, each section also has a three-man Bren team and a seven-man rifle team. I took two men out of uh, two of the sections to man the boys' AT rifle. And then that means that the other section that was going to have seven is missing one. And then I'm down to five on the rookie junior leaders section to account for both of the uh, men that I have missing. And of course also the two inch mortar. So that is the British platoon. Let's take a look at the Germans. On this side we have Lieutenant Heinz Kramer's first platoon. So we have Lieutenant Heinz Kramer himself with pistol. And his platoon sergeant Dieter Cole has an SMG. Five centimeter mortar, three man crew. We have three squads. Each squad is a junior leader sergeant with submachine gun, three man MG34 team, six man rifle team. Uh, they're also going to be down two men. And when Andre gets here, he's going to have to decide how he wants to uh, organize his platoon to account for the loss of the two men. So that is it for the forces. So uh, once Andre gets here, we'll do all of our pregame stuff, do the patrol phase, and then we'll get started with the game. I guess I should mention real quick the objective of tonight's mission. The objective is for the Germans to drive the British off the board uh, either voluntarily or through force morale while keeping their own force morale at three or above. So now we will do the pregame stuff. So Andre is here now and uh, you might notice the table looks a little different since I did the intro. I actually looked a little bit closer at the map. I was forgetting some hedges, I was forgetting a building, and I was forgetting a fence behind. So I added those. Did you mention the hedges along the roads? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we're going to roll force morale now. Yes. Yes. A six and a one. Okay, good. Whew. So you're starting at an eight. I'm starting at 11. I need that. That is a big, big help to me. So, okay, we'll do the patrol phase. Patrol phase now complete. So, where's my pointer at? There we go. All right, so it was an interesting patrol phase as I did not move a single patrol marker the entire time. Andre, uh, he had a, a group like here, and he had another group over here. And what I did is I lined mine up 12 inches apart, 12 inches from the, I made sure to block the edge because I know Andre is going to sneak around. Next thing he'd have a, sneak. <laughs> he'll have a jump off point behind me somehow. Strategically, <laughs> strategic movement. So I made sure to block that. I got one as far into the orchard, or I'm sorry, wheat field as I could. And so he wound up with one over on the edge there. He wound up with one here. He wound up with one here. Don't forget there's scrub. Uh, got similar in rules to the wheat field and then he wound up with his last one over on this edge so I wound up oh I still got one to place too um, so I wound up with one here another one here another one here in the or uh, wheat field and it's, it's gonna be hard not to call that orchard all night <laughs> let's just say if I call it an orchard I mean it's a wheat field and then I actually we call it an orchard that has the characteristics of a wheat field okay That'll fit. It's a really thin orchard. Yes, that's exactly what I... And then my fourth one, I can place anywhere in my table quarter. I'll place it here. I know those are American tank crew. That's all I have at the moment. <laughs> Americans weren't even in the war at this point. So, But anyway, so there's all four of mine in one big square. And that is the patrol phase complete. Now we'll go over the plans, and Andre will do his plan first tonight. German plan. This is going to be a tough one. Although I've got great position with my jump off points and we've got Travis cornered out there, he's got lots of terrain in that building where he's going to hole up. So he's got the hard cover, I've just got soft, I'm not going to win a firefight too easily um, against that. 
I'm planning to bring the 222 armored car with the 20 millimeter cannon so that I can work over the building a little bit. With his five points of support, I'm expecting him to bring something that can fairly easily deal with that. Um, there's so little cover on the board for a vehicle that I'll have difficulty in keeping my uh, armored car safe. So it's going to require me to deploy out with uh, my uh, troops in order to try and get a field of fire so that even uh, if he's back there in that orchard shooting out at me um, I can get enough pins on him or uh, get enough suppression fire in there that uh, he's not going to take out my armored car. I'm pretty sure the armored car is going to be the uh, key to it. I've also got a flamethrower team which is going to kind of be the ace in the hole if I can get him up close enough to uh, start torching that building that will also be key so uh, this is going to be a rough assault I don't see uh, coming in quickly as much as I love that kind of uh, a rush assault um, I don't see that going necessarily well so I'm not going to do a Stukum bombardment no pregame barrage um, just putting my uh, points into uh, um, offensive weapons that I'm hoping can lay down quite a bit of damage. So with the uh, the other three points I'm uh, leaning towards a pioneer team. I'm uh, gonna talk over with Travis. I'm not sure if I'm allowed uh, entrenchments in this one or not. If so, um, some of my forward uh, positions up in here could definitely benefit from some hard cover. So we'll uh, We'll find out and we'll uh, be hitting Travis's plan. All right, so British plan. Um, I'm happy to have a three point advantage in force morale right off the bat. That's gonna be, that'll come in very handy. Uh, he's gotta keep his at three, so he's a lot closer to you know three and zero than I am. So that's a good start. Um, I only have five support points, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring the Char B1S, the French heavy tank. Thought about bringing some uh, entrenchments, um, but I'm afraid he's going to bring the Stuka, and that will just annihilate everyone that comes in. Going to have a shock, but for vehicles, all it does is act like a pregame barrage. So I'm free to try to bring in my tank. So tank's going to come in here. What I'm going to try to do is just brush this jump off point, cap it. Um, I could deploy into the wheat field. Uh, there might be a short range firefight, but my tank will help. Um, I don't, I'm not sure where he's going to deploy from. I mean, he's got jump off points there, there, and there. So he can come in from many directions. If he does start committing to this side more, I might try to rush out and snag that one. And I'm going to try to snag that one with the tank. Um, yeah, he has 10 points. So if he brings the Stuka, I think that's like four points. Tank-wise, anti-tank-wise, I'm not sure. He could bring a 38T. I'm not sure what kind of AT he's going to have. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I'm just hoping that my tank is going to be pretty much invulnerable to anything he has. And I'm going to bring that in for sure, especially if the Stuka is here. That might be the only thing I bring on to start with. Or if the Stuka does come in and doesn't blow up the buildings, hopefully, I have two jump-off points um, within six inches of the entire building. So I could deploy everything into the buildings. I could deploy stuff into the courtyard from both of these. And if I'm in the courtyard, um, I can pull shock. I can come in and start pulling shock. Um, I think the thing I'm probably most worried about him bringing possibly is the 81 millimeter mortar battery. Because I'm pretty close together here. He could shut down this entire house. So. He's got a lot of options with 10 support points, and I don't know what he's going to do. He was talking Stuka at the beginning, but that could have been some psychological warfare, so he might not even bring it. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, pretty much the tank is going to be my main thing to start with. I want to get that on as soon as possible and start driving towards that deployment point. And if I can get that one, then possibly I can swing around and get these. Um, it depends on what kind of AT he has, but... 
I guess we'll find out. So other, other than that, I would like to deploy into the house. Uh, I got a nice window here. I got windows on both sides, so I can cover a lot of ground out of that building, assuming it doesn't get blown up by a Stuka. So that is my plan. Pretty much the tank is my plan. That's my only support option, or my only support choice I'm going to be bringing. So we'll see how it does. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right. You asked if I didn't, and I didn't, so well, the answer is yes. <laughs> Andre is the uh, attacker, so he gets the first. He's using the red dice. I asked him if he brought a red d didn't. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have the extra dice. <laughs> and we are back to the red dice because all my tabletop CP dice are pretty much gone to patrons at this point. Wow. So three threes, a one, and a five. So a very nice start. All right, so Andre brought in, well, virtually all of his platoon. So he brought a squad in here, Overwatch. Squad in here on Overwatch. Squad in there on Overwatch, in hardcover. So they've snuck in, dug a trench, and got in it. And then the mortar did the same here. Should we be concerned that none of the officers uh, came with us? <laughs> yeah, they'll be here in time. All right, so that's, that's Andre's turn. So here we go. No double phase. Oh, but you can bring all your and senior no threes. In. No threes. Ah, uh, but you can bring in three senior leaders. Did you bring a pregame barrage? I did You're, not. You didn't? No. Really? Why not? No pregame barrage. No Stuka. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was just planning on you to roll crappy. Oh, Thank you for complying. I'm, I'm, I'm helping out on that part. Of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll figure out what to do. All right. So I brought in a couple squads. I brought in my Duff with them. So McDuff's going to have the Bren team here. He's looking out this way. He's going to focus fire with two commands onto the machine gun. And then um, everything else is just going to fire at those guys in that trench there. And these guys are out of line sight. And that would make a good name. McDuff with them. <laughs> McDuff with them. Okay, next time. <laughs> so all right, here we go. So needing fours. So four hits all on the machine gun. And I roll these? Uh, yeah, yeah, you roll those. So three shock. Three shock? Not as good as I was hoping. Three shock is pretty good, though. And then I'll figure out the rest of the dice going back at those guys. All right, so he'll fire his overwatch after. Um, so everything going back at those guys needing fives. Come on, I need a good roll here. One, two, three, four, five. I guess that's not too bad. Okay, so uh, split them up. Two on the machine gun. Ouch. One dead. <laughs> and a dead and a shock on the rifle. So a dead machine gun, roll your leader. Oh, it's him. See what happens to him. He's knocked unconscious. Not a good way to start today. And then one dead machine gun crew. Dead uh, crewman and a dead rifle. Uh, no, one of those is the leader, so. Oh, it wasn't. I guess we should have rolled, but okay, pick whatever you want. You want to take the. High as the machine gun, low it's the rifle. Okay, rifle. Okay, bad thing happens. Nothing. Bad thing Damn. doesn't happen. I needed something. The bad thing happening would have been great. Uh, starting at 8, yeah. And uh, so I guess you can do all your shooting Let's back. Fire some overwatch. So these guys, 12 shots, need fours. That's a lot of fours. Wow. That's a lot of fours. <laughs> Seven fours. Uh, dead and two shock. Check the leader. Oh, it's my leader. <laughs> oh. He loses a command. And nothing. Is, well, which leader though? Oh. Uh, senior. Senior leader. Loses a command. Yep. Ouch. Yeah, I think I dropped one. So I think a one on a senior leader is something. Senior leader wounded. Yeah, it is a minus one. So I'm down to 10. Okay. Oh. Okay. But I didn't lose anyone. Second overwatch. Okay. So I got. Uh, same thing here, or 13 shots? Looks like you got 12 there. 12. 8 plus 4 rifles. Okay. Even fives. Fives? Yep. I only needed fours over there. Yeah, we're a lot closer. 
Only three hits. Okay, so I'll just put a uh, rifle, uh, rifle, Bren. So shock on that rifle team. And I think that is it for this phase. This is very early in the game for us to be yeah, we, trading shots already. I think we skipped <laughs> about seven phases here. I think so. Okay, that is a doable roll. So these guys uh, ran up here. They got a really good, he pulled a shock off of them. Got a double six and moved up ten to there. Brought his other support in, a 2-2-2 two, two, two here on the road. Moved 1-D6, he's going to fire into the window there. Needing fives. Needing fives. Two, two. fives. Loose and cover by one. So nothing. Uh, and then he was going to fire them. So 12 shots with those guys, needing fives. Cannon whip. One, two, three. Three. Again, not quite good. Enough. All right, so rifles here. Uh, rifles here. Bren. <laughs> yes. This is a stout building. Uh, <laughs> and it's my phase now, correct? It uh, I think appears I've used all my stuff, yes. All right. I can't believe Big Bobby McDuff got hit. I can't ah. believe you just brought all your stuff in. Uh, not everything. I, I don't have my 2-inch mortar or my AT rifle, which I need to take that 222 out. But I'm happy with it. So I brought in my one support unit, the Char B1 there. And I have to do something about them. So I'm going to fire the cannon. It's one-man turret. So I'm guessing I can only fire one thing. I'm half tempted to say he could fire a machine gun too, just because he happened to come in this turn. But yeah, I'll just fire one thing. So, cannon at those guys. Four hits. You're not letting up at all, are you, Travis? Screw them up. I need to win this one, man. If I lose this one. Two on the machine gun. One dead. Two dead. So, two dead rifles and a dead machine gun. Check your leader, though, One more shock. It's your leader. One more leader. He's wounded, so roll a bad thing. Was oh, that's minus one. So you're down to seven. Yes. Okay. So you lost again. We forgot to roll to see which one. You lost th two guys and then the wounded leader. So the next thing I'm going to do um, with the four, I'm going to have McDuff with his two commands have them throw two grenades out. So needing threes. So both grenades hit. So it's. Let me figure this out. So he's down uh, one command. Now he's got four grenade hits because two grenades hit him. So in the open. So two on the machine gun. Dead in a shock. A shock. So roll your leader again. Nope. So a dead machine gun and a shock and then a shock on the rifle. So with the other three, uh, the squad leader of this Bren, uh, who commands the Bren team, is going to have them focus fire onto the machine gun. But I have two shocks on you, minus one shot. Uh, two hits. All on the machine gun. Oh, two dead. That's it for the machine gun. Yep. All right, bad things happen. Probably nothing. I doubt Team wiped out. What'd you roll? Two. Damn, zero. Damn, I need to start dropping you, man. Okay, so that was another three. So I actually have a three left. And with the last three, I'm going to have this squad is going to open up on the guys in the hard cover over there. Ten shots needing fives. One, two, three, four. Four hits. Split them up. Two on the machine gun. Shock. <laughs> Dead in a shock. Wow. So a shock on the machine gun. Check your leader. No. That would have been too easy. <laughs> So you lost a uh, dead rifle yep. and a shock, and then a shock on the machine gun. And I think that is it for my turn. So on to the Germans. No double phase, Andre. This would be a good place for one. Yeah, uh, yeah, it would. No, but you got or a lot I'll, of threes again. Or I'll just activate everything. So these guys, um, 
What's his name? Dieter Cole, sergeant. He came in. Or these guys move up. They moved up three inches, just hugging the wall. These guys used their one command initiative to move up to the wall. Now he's going to fire the uh, 222 at the building. So one hit. <laughs> it is nothing. And you're going to move a D6 too, right? Yeah. So a six inch move is if you stay on the road. All right, so he forgot uh, his leader was wounded. So those that squad's doing nothing. So my turn. Damn. A double phase, man. I don't remember the last time I got a double phase. So four, three, two, one. The two and a one, I've activated the Char B1S. And I've moved up and I'm gonna fire the cannon, the howitzer. Since it's a small turret, I can't fire the uh, which makes it almost worthless. <laughs> actually, with the one, so if that's the case, if I had the three, I could, and the one, I could actually activate two positions in the tank. But I'm just going to fire the main gun, or the cannon at this guy. I need the seven, because uh, small, low profile. No, missed. Okay, so with the uh, other three, this ju uh, junior leader is going to have them drop two grenades out. So we'll just say it just auto-hits. Because, I mean, no. how can I miss? By rolling double ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it didn't miss. I needed one to go off in the, uh, in the upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Fumble. That would, that would Got a little too excited. <laughs> so four hits on those guys, Andre. And that's all. It's only one team now, so. Go team. So two dead and a shock. Check your leader. Nope. Just two dead in a shot. That's all. Okay, and with the four, McDuff is going to have... Oh, I'm half tempted. I want to move away from the window, but frankly, that's not doing a whole lot of damage. So it's almost worth it to fire the rifle team and then have this whole squad fire those guys. McDuff is going to order this uh, rifle team in these two windows and then this entire section over here. Everything is going to go onto the guys in the hard cover over there. So I'm just going to leave my brain in the window at the mercy of the 222. Two, two. One, two. Two hits. That is the Search worst roll. Right. <laughs> worst roll of all time. What were you shooting? Uh, those guys over there. Okay. Machine gun. Nothing. Oh, I got one. Rifleman kill. Check your leader, Andre. He's not dead. He's just wounded. Uh. No. Nah, he's good. A dead rifle. All right, and I think that's it. We're both still sitting at one chain of command point. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy. That is pretty insane. But I sense a double phase coming up. It's been a while. Okay, maybe not. Okay, double command. Uh... <laughs> double chain of command points. I'll take that instead of a double phase any day. Then two ones and a three. So Andre brought in the flamethrower team here. And then he ran uh, his platoon charging up, and then he just had everyone kind of advance up the wall. And that was it for his phase, and I'll go straight into the British double phase, Andre. I'm calling it. Woohoo! Nope. <laughs> I got three fives, though. <laughs> so I'm up to four all of a sudden. Sweet. And I did get a three to use my tank and then my four. First thing I did with the three, I moved the tank up 1d6, and we're going to fire again at this, since that's all I can see. Actually, I could target your uh, mortar team. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, we'll try to take this thing out. It's a hit. A mortar team that hasn't fired yet. <laughs> yeah, so it's four AP on the uh, Char B1 against two armor on the 222. And I got one. So even, equal, so roll a D6. Equal hits on a four. Uh, what'd you roll it for? Yep. Halt and engage fire. So next phase you gotta shoot at me. Oh, cool. Um, Can I do anything to you? I think, yeah. <laughs> He's actually not bad. His AP is actually halfway decent, so you, you could. Okay, so then I have a four left. So the, uh, McDuff, um, is gonna use his two commands. He's gonna have this, uh, rifle team and then this entire section fire back at those guys again. I think do anything here. One, two, three, four, five, six hits, Andre. 
Throw them right here. So three each. Machine gun. One dead. <laughs> Ooh, that return fire! <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but I I dropped the wall on my senior leader. A catastrophe. All right, so two dead. Check your leader again. Not no, but another dead rifle and another dead machine gun. Got to do uh, this double phase here. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. We've been waiting for it. No. <laughs> what up with? Two ones, a two, and a three, huh? Just like I was hoping for. So, Andre, uh, these guys went on covering fire, covering these two windows here with the Bren and two rifles. He moved his flamethrower up, and then the leader ordered the other squad up. So, there's actually two section or squads here. This guy and like two rifles are that depleted one, and then the other one is the full squad. So, now we go to the British double phase. Damn. Well, at least I got a chain of command dice. And a couple ones. No four, though. Yeah, or you no, got four. No three. <laughs> you got uh, four. So with the two, my last section, uh, most of them are over here, but I did bring them in over here facing this way. And with the four, I used McDuff to put them on Overwatch. And I actually had two guys on the bottom floor, and I ran them up to the top. So we're, everyone's on the top floor. We are now covering with Overwatch this way. So if he pops out with that flamethrower, I'm going to get a chance to... To try to kill him with it, or kill him. Still no double taste. It's amazing. And no chain of command dice. I think this is the longest. I don't know. When was the last time we played a game where we've gone this long without a double phase? I don't know. All right, so. Well, let's see here. Lieutenant Kramer has decided to withdraw the platoon. I know he rolled his dice, but we've come to a gentleman's agreement. He asked. Uh, McDonald let me withdraw and McDonald being a gentleman that he is said okay even though he's off the board <laughs> <laughs> McDuff he asked McDuff and McDuff even though wounded said okay so uh, British victory and we'll come back and wrap it up so we're here to wrap it up uh, post game so um, obviously a uh, British victory uh, we've defeated Heinz Kramer for the first time in this campaign and bookkeeping wise uh, Heinz Kramer he lost um, okay, he had 11 casualties, 5 were killed, 3 were wounded, will miss the next game, 3 will return the next game, uh, in the next game. So in the next game, Kramer's platoon is going to be down 9 dudes, which is basically a full squad. So we might not see Kramer again. You might not. <laughs> uh, his men's opinion was at plus 2, but it's now at 0 because they're not happy about, well, they got, they got slaughtered. And uh, his CO's opinion dropped uh, to plus 1. Because he was pretty much an idiot today. Yeah. And then uh, for McDonald, uh, his men's opinion went from zero to plus three. They were very happy with the victory. They're very happy with no casualties whatsoever, except for the wounded McDuff. But he'll be back to full strength. The CO's opinion actually went up from minus three to minus two. So I will no longer have that uh, negative one on my force support. So the next time we play this, I'll be at 6, Andre will be at 12 because um, he gets 10 plus 2 for the second time he fights it. So, yeah, uh, that's the game. So, uh, wrapping it up, what was your plan, Andre? Um, did you stick off to the your, board. Did you, did you stick to your plan? Um, up until the first die roll. <laughs> until you saw how good it was? Yeah, just couldn't pass up that uh, opportunity to bring everything all at once. Um, I just, I didn't see you necessarily being able to recover from that, and... I did. You did. You want to know why? Because you had everything by itself. As soon as I saw you put one there, one here and one there, I knew I was going to win. Rule number one, never put a squad out by itself. I mean, I'm, okay, I can't say that I knew for sure you were going to, I was going to win, but I knew the odds were in my favor because I could pick on squads. Well, that and you understood that uh, I couldn't assault into the buildings to take you out, which... Well, you could, but I was on the second floor, so... Yeah. Well, except... <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you could have assaulted into the building, but you would have got slaughtered. Yeah, um, <laughs> and that was basically my plan to take you out of the buildings was to assault in, so... Um, yeah, my plan wasn't going to work. So you were going to sacrifice your platoon to win the map. Which, you have another platoon, 
So if you won this map by killing these guys, that would have been a smart move. Yeah. But, yeah, trying to assault in... Well, it's not like I could blast you out. I did toy with the idea of bringing in a uh, off-table bombardment. You should have. <laughs> but... That's what... One thing I was scared of was you actually doing that. And honestly, those just tend to be so boring but uh, and so overpowered. But, but you could have shut down this building. Well, yeah. Yeah, um, I, it, yeah it just it would have been too easy to if it worked. And no one rolled a triple six. I didn't even get a chain of command dice till way oh. late. So no. I mean, that barrage would have been going for a long time. Well, the only uh, downside to that is I'd have had to uh, keep my observer from getting blasted, which... Well, not really. Even if he died, the barrage would still go until the end of the turn. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to move it. Right, but how am uh, I going to... I would have had to... That wouldn't have mattered, really. Yeah. No, and then I would have had to bring something out to, to kill it, which my tank could have done. But, yeah, then I would have been forced to deploy in here. But I think your first mistake was splitting up the platoon. Uh, I was ex I was kind of anticipating a wave of just three squads moving. Well, and once I saw how it was all playing out, it's like, okay, I should have just brought everything um, in on the uh, end, uh, seeing as you can only fire one weapon out of that window. Yeah, definitely a bottleneck for me was only the Bren. Yeah, if you were to just deploy it here. And that's kind of what I was, uh, well... Especially the flamethrower. We should have brought him in earlier over here. and he I didn't have, have the uh, ones. Right, that's true. But you so, did have a one. Um, you brought the mortar in. Yeah. That you never Mostly because I forgot that I had a flamethrower at uh, that point. If I would have saw a flamethrower turn one, I would have been a more nervous. <laughs> yes. and uh, <laughs> That would have changed the entire game. I would not have been in the window. I don't know what I would have done. I, and, I would have been uh, a totally different game. Yeah, I should have put the entrenchment over uh, here for uh, covering fire onto the window. Had a unit covering fire. Yeah. Well, the good when, thing is, Andre, you get another chance. So maybe you can try that next time. <laughs> well, or I just uh, do the uh, Stuka and uh, try and get a good roll on the... Imagine yeah. if I'd had the Stuka bombardment and uh, got my first roll like that. Oh. Well, then you might have... This is all one building, so you could have destroyed the building outright with a Stuka or had an unexploded bomb in there or something. Well, or even if you were just coming in with uh, shock piecemeal. Oh, yeah, I would have been. Uh, yeah, if you would have brought the Stuka, I was I was worried about that too because it's like, what am I going to do? First I was thinking, okay, well, I'll just talk about my plan now since it's kind of dovetailing into that. Uh, my plan was actually to run the tank along the edge and take that jump off point. But as soon as I saw that, those, the squad out in the open. It's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta hammer them because they're the real, only real threat. Yeah, you're in hard cover. I'm in hard cover, but, and then these guys were getting pummeled anyway. They lost their leader. It's like, okay, the leader going down. Pretty much uh, that at that point, if I could have pulled them out of there, I would have. <laughs> yeah, they were hosed then. So at that point, I'm like, okay, the maybe I'm not too worried about them. So I'm gonna use my tank to uh, try to decimate these guys, and I did. And then my other plan is to have the Stuka, I was going to deploy in the walls early and mm -hmm. just start pulling shock. And then go into the building if I had to, but yeah, it would have been odd if you, if I was out here and you ran around and got in, I was, yeah. <laughs> ring around the rosy. Type thing. <laughs> Where'd they go? <laughs> so yeah, that was my plan. Um, obviously plans changed during the game and as soon as that leader over there got hit and that squad started taking casualties, I started focusing on them. The 2-2-2 two, two, two did nothing, I don't think, the entire game. It fired. It fired, okay. It didn't kill anyone. Though. I think it put a shock on, maybe. No, I don't think it ever hit nothing. No, it hit. I, I just saved it. I mean, okay, yeah. Well, I wasn't soft covered, but... Yeah, the 2-2-2 two, two, two did not do nearly as well this game as last game. Especially when going up against this. So, Andre's got a lot to think about. There's a lot of options for him, though. He can bring the bison. That thing can blow up the building, basically, with one shot. Bring in a Stuka and the Bison, probably, with 12 points. So the next time is going to be a lot harder for me. So Yeah, I'm going to uh, put a little more effort into it. Um, 
I was making this way too much of a fair fight. Well, you were th to the point where, uh, yeah, I didn't have a prayer. He got a little cocky. Uh, Kramer's been rolling, man. He steamrolled the first two maps, and he thought he was unstoppable. He got a little taste of his own medicine tonight. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's it for this one. That was a good game for me. Uh, I needed a win. I had to have this. If I had lost this, my men would be very discouraged, and so would I. And at least now, you know, we got some life back in us. So. Anyway, that's it for this one. So yeah, um, as usual, check out the Patreon page. Uh, we got some Patreon perks on there. If you're if you want to become a patron, help the channel out, keep it going, make it better. Check out the Facebook group as well. Uh, we just reached 500 members on the Facebook group, which is pretty sweet. That's a lot of faces. That's a lot of faces. And uh, so that's cool. And everyone on there is real cool. There's no uh, you know. Oh, Except for you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're the only non-cool person on the Facebook page. That's because you never say anything. That is not true. I make rude comments at okay. least once a month. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it. So, uh, again, uh, British victory, and it was a fun game. So the British have life again, and we're ready to stop the Germans on the next one. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.